Columbus Landmarks 2021 Annual Meeting. I'm Becky West, Executive Director, and I'm joined by several of our board members and staff for an action-packed agenda. Please hold on to your hats. We are all fully vaccinated and therefore together, and we hope you're vaccinated too, or that you will be soon so that we can resume our in-person tours and events. We have missed being together. Columbus Landmarks is focused on the future with a refined and powerful vision, a clear mission, and strong supportive values aligned to advance our work and grow our impact. We are fully committed to equity, sustainable growth, and design excellence for all. We are positioned for new strategies to enhance Columbus's cultural and economic vibrancy as the city recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic and accommodates projected growth. All that we are accomplishing is made possible with grant support from the Greater Columbus Arts Council, the Columbus Foundation, the Thomas R. Gross Family Foundation, Lori Family Charitable Trust, Ohio Humanities and OH Cares Funding, the 1772 Foundation, and the Historic Preservation Education Foundation. And with generous support from our 2020 corporate partners, AT&T Mobility, Campbell Plastering, Casto, CLH and Associates, Connect Real Estate, Curve, Designing Local, Dinsmore, Edwards Development, F2 Companies, Miles McClellan Construction, MKSK, Rogers Craniac Architects, Schooley Caldwell, and SMBH. And by individual donors and members like you. Thank you. And now Ryan Aiello, our past president, will get the meeting started. Thank you, Becky. Every year our organization has the opportunity to nominate and vote on trustees to serve up to two consecutive three-year terms. I'm pleased to announce the nominations of four individuals for a second term. Randy Black, Aaron Durbin, Ben Gratisic, and Peter Kraniak. Thanks to all four. We look forward to your continued service. I'm also happy to introduce Michael Douglas, nominated to a first term. Michael is a graduate of The Ohio State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration. He works for Kaufman Development as a senior financial analyst, specializing in finance, real estate, and urban analysis. It's both a privilege and an honor uh, to be invited onto the board of Columbus Landmarks. A few of you know me, uh, most of you don't. Uh, so for those that don't, hi, my name is Mike Douglas. Uh, as Ryan said, I'm a financial analyst at Kaufman Development and I'm also a ULI member. I'm really excited to join Landmarks, um, mostly because I'm really interested in urban development, I'm really interested in Columbus, and I'm really interested in history. And this opportunity really provides me a way to mesh all three in a little bit of a unique way. So I'm excited to get my sleeves rolled up and, and get going, um, and I'm also excited to meet every one of you. Thanks, Mike, good to have you on board. Next up, we've got Aaron Durbin, who's gonna take us through last year's financial report. Thanks, Ryan. Despite COVID, our organization has made enormous strides over the past year. We improved our office technology, migrating to cloud-based solutions that provide more robust access to our business systems and enable remote collaboration between our staff and board. We engaged an accounting firm to play the role of controller for our organization and to partner with us in forward-looking financial conversations. And as a result of your continued support, Columbus Landmarks entered 2021 in a strong financial position with a lot to look forward to. We look forward to utilizing the money we've diligently raised over the past several years to support our newly created Home Preservation Loan Fund and Endangered Properties Fund. We also look forward to resuming our workshops, tours, and events. These activities will allow us to reconnect with our members and supporters and to be active in our community. They also provide necessary funds to support our continued growth. For those who would like to view the details of last year's financials, our annual report is available to download on our website. Click on About, then use the drop-down menu to navigate to our 2020 annual report document. Up next is Gary White from Denmark on High a Euro-style cocktail bistro located in the short north. Gary has honored us with the creation of a new signature cocktail. Hi, and welcome back. I hope you all had a chance to make the honey syrup from our last video and gather all the items and ingredients we're gonna to need to make this landmark cocktail today. 
I've got everything that I need. I'm excited. Let's get to it. We're going to be basing our cocktail today off one of my favorite class of gin cocktails called the Bee's Knees. The Bee's Knees is what we in the business like to refer to as a basic sour build cocktail. And that means it's two parts of some type of base spirit, one part some type of sweetener, and one part some type of citrus. Literally hundreds of cocktails are made from this basic format. We start off by cutting the end off the strawberry and then slicing it down into segments. I'm going to take those end pieces and use to muddle. And then I'm going to save some of those really pretty center pieces for my garnish here at the end. So we'll just kind of put those right there at the side. Now let's bring some uh, herbs to the party. I've got some uh, fresh mint and a little bit of uh, lemon thyme. I'm going to put that right there in my hand like that. Give it a little smack, pop it right in the glass. That opens up all the essential oils on the leaves and gives them just a nice activation there going into the cocktail. You also are gonna need some freshly squeezed lemon juice for this cocktail. We're gonna make that happen by cutting a lemon uh, in half and then squeezing it into a jigger. Directly into the glass. Next we add one ounce of our herbed honey syrup. Take a muttler and give a few firm presses to combine all the flavors together. You don't want to overdo it here. And then we're going to add our base spirit. I'm going to use Watershed's four pill gin. It's a citrus four gin produced locally here in Columbus, Ohio. But again, please feel free to use whatever spirit you're most comfortable with. It's going to be delicious no matter what you choose. Top off your mixing glass all the way with ice and give it a good shake for about 30 seconds or until the shaker becomes really cold to the touch. Separate your shaking tin from the glass. Pour the liquid mixture into the mixing glass. We're going to put our Hawthorne strainer right over the top of that and then strain it directly in to our Nick and Nora glass. I'm using a double strainer, but again, this is a totally optional step. It's just going to give it a little bit of a cleaner product there at the end. We're going to garnish this today with a strawberry segment, and some fresh herbs. And there you have it, the Landmark Cocktail, an updated version of a timeless classic. I hope you've enjoyed this little cocktail demonstration and you've picked up a few little techniques along the way. Now that we've all got a drink in our hands, please join me in welcoming trustee Tony Bell to toast the 2021 Columbus Landmarks Preservation Award winners. Cheers. Hi, I'm Tony Bell, and I have the honor of recognizing six outstanding individuals and organizations who have advanced historic preservation in Columbus through action. Please join me in raising a glass or your landmark cocktail to the winners of the 2021 Preservation Awards. And the Henry Hunker Urban Legacy Award goes to Tom Katzenmeyer and the Greater Columbus Arts Council. As CEO of GCAC, Tom is a tireless arts advocate, transforming our city through creative collaborations. We salute his preservation mindedness too. Relocating GCAC's offices to the rehabbed historic Winders Motor Company on Long Street. Establishing an arts residency program in Amina Robinson's former home. Employing artists to paint vibrant murals on plywood window coverings last summer and then recycling and exhibiting them to spark community dialogue. Thank you and cheers to Tom and his team. The Paul E. Young Jr. Outstanding Achievement Education Award goes to Julia Lynn Walker. As founder of the Bronzeville Growers Market, Julia Lynn is helping to connect fresh food and healthy living with community and backyard gardening programs to strengthen the health and well-being of the King Lincoln Bronzeville neighborhood. While serving on our board, Julia Lynn helped research and produce the African American Settlements Report to lead a series of virtual programs on sundown towns, exploring discriminatory restrictions in bans against people of color. Thank you and cheers to Julia Lynn. The Frederick J. Holdridge Outstanding Group Award goes to the Franklin County Genealogical Society African American Interest Group. Under the leadership of Stephanie Sparrow Hughes, the African American Interest Group addresses inequality with enhanced research models. The Franklin County Genealogical Society and its determined researchers, including Rita Smith, Nettie Ferguson, and Sandra Jamison, 
worked with Columbus Landmarks to produce the African American Settlements and Communities Report. And they continue to document the overlooked and yet to be discovered stories of Columbus critical to workplace historic preservation. Our thanks and cheers to the Genies and the African American Interest Group. The Dixie Sayre Miller Patron Award goes to William J. Riott, Casto. Bill Riott is an experienced developer with a deep appreciation for historic architecture and a generous supporter of our work. Bill is credited with saving and redeveloping the Julian. Five East Broad Street Mansions, Eight Broad Street, and former South High School Barrett Middle School. He was also a partner in the restoration of the Levesque Tower. Fortunately, Bill's work is not finished. Work is underway with the historic Lubel Manufacturing Company in Franklinton and the Ford Motor Assembly Plant, former Kroger Bakery site on Cleveland Avenue. Cheers and congratulations to Bill. The Doreen Yuha Sauer Outstanding Individual Award goes to Columbus City Council Member Priscilla Tyson. When she retires at year end, following 14 years of service, Priscilla Tyson will be the longest serving woman ever on Columbus City Council, and her advocacy for black girls and young women will be an important part of her legacy. A lifelong Columbus resident and true blue East Sider, Council Member Tyson has kept the health and well being of Columbus neighborhoods and opportunities for all residents at the heart of her work. In every action and interaction, Councilmember Tyson was respectful of our historic past while working for a better future. We wish you well in your retirement. And the James J. Keyes President's Award goes to Stoff's Coffee. In 1988, Stoff's began in Columbus and opened their first store in a historic commercial building on Grandview Avenue. Today, with six locations in historic neighborhoods that smell as good as they look, Stoffs has proven that the old buildings and good coffee go really well together. If you haven't visited their Neal Avenue location in the former Presbyterian Church, head that way for an outstanding example of high quality adaptive reuse and a cup of joe, of course. Let's raise our mugs to Stoffs. Please visit our website at columbuslandmarks.org to learn more about these outstanding individuals and groups. Hello, I'm Matt Lazier and I'm the outgoing president of Columbus Landmarks. In its 44 year history, Columbus Landmarks has produced numerous studies and reports that have highlighted critical buildings, sites, and neighborhoods which are worthy of extra efforts towards historic preservation. These studies include an inventory of historically significant downtown buildings in 1980 and 1988 an inventory and analysis of African American resources in the Near East Side, and a study of African American settlement areas throughout Columbus. We also have our most endangered sites list from 2014 to 2021. As part of an advocacy initiative over the past few years, we've inventoried all of these sites into one cohesive geographic database, what we're calling the Atlas of Columbus Landmarks. We've compiled the highlights of these reports into a summary document that you'll be able to flip through on our website and we've also created an online interactive web map where you can see all of these building sites and neighborhoods. The Atlas will be a living document and we anticipating adding more information to the database over time. And we're looking for your help to continue to fill in the details about these historic resources. So that is a summary of all the work we've done in the past, but what about the future? As part of our initiative to think about what the future of historic preservation holds, we've created an initiative called the Urban Ideas Forum. This is meant to generate input from you about the types of sites that should be included in our advocacy efforts moving forward. Maintaining the Atlas will be a lot of work and we invite you to help us through participation in one of our committees. Specifically, we need help with photo documentation and historical research about these key elements. We also need help understanding when these elements may become endangered. We've assigned a status to all these elements and if you feel or know of a potential threat to any of these resources, we'd love to hear from you. This has been a big project that I'm really passionate about, and I'm glad you'll now be able to check it out at columbuslandmarks.org. Next up is Rita Fuller Yates. Thank you, Matt, and hello, everyone. I'm Rita Fuller Yates. Each spring, we ask you to look around your neighborhood and throughout Columbus to identify sites threatened by deterioration, vacancy, demolition, 
or in pending development and invite you to nominate a site, a site to be considered for our endangered site list located on the Columbus Landmarks website. We then conduct research on the sites and vet those nominations to create and publish our list. We'd like to thank those of you who took the time to enter your nominations. And today, I'm excited to reveal the 2021 Most Endangered Site List that represents a fantastic opportunity for sustainability, equity, and vibrancy. The sky is the limit, people. Let's save and reuse these buildings. And lastly, a special thanks to our volunteer photographer, Dick Burry for capturing so many beautiful images for us again this year. This harmonious collection of brick buildings are important touchstones for the Black and Catholic communities in Columbus. St. Cyprian Parish was the first Catholic church established to serve the Black community featured a church, school, and rectory on its grounds. Designed in 1961 by Fred Irvin Neon Sales of Columbus for Jerry's Drive-In, this Clintonville landmark retains its mid-century style and integrity and adds visual interest to this busy corner. Central Ohio Federal Savings and Loan Association moved into this building designed in a Greek Revival style with six Corinthian columns to evoke a symbol of strength and rugged character. The 1926 Pythian Temple is the only building in Columbus known to have been designed by Samuel Plateau a talented and prolific African-American architect. Built in the Renaissance style, the Pythian served as the York Masonic Lodge and is a celebrated theater featuring entertainment legends including Count Basie, Duke Ellington, Cab Calloway, and Ella Fitzgerald. The stately OSU Kappa Sigma Fraternity Chapter House sits on the site of the Robert Neal and later Henry Neal Indianola Mansion. Indianola was a Swiss style home in a documented underground railroad site with a tunnel leading to the Olentangy River. An overhaul renovation that encompasses the Neal home was designed in 1938 by Ray Sims in a Virginia colonial style. This beautiful neoclassical revival style building was designed by David Ribel, opened in 1909 it was replaced 20 years later by West High at 179 South Powell Avenue. This building then became Starling Middle School. In 1950, a gymnasium designed by Howard Dwight Smith, architect of the Ohio Stadium, was added in a similar tan common bond brick. This 1890 bank building was designed in the Richardsonian Romanesque style with keystone arches across the upper stone facade. While the storefront has been altered, the original stone columns with ionic capitals are intact. This building was indentured as part of the Columbus Landmarks Lost Treasures Found Architectural Survey. The potential of this historic and key corner commercial building is somewhat obscured by boarded window openings. However, its architectural features that include stone lintels and corbelled cornices are intact. Built in 1910, the building features row house apartments attached to the rear of this property. Dedicated in 1923, this charming brick church building is neighborly and approachable despite its Gothic Revival architectural style. The building feature is a square tower main entrance with crenellations, pointed arches, and buttresses.
I'm Peter Cranach, and this is Stephen Metz. As an architect and structural engineer, we're excited and honored to be leading two new initiatives for the Columbus Landmarks, the Endangered Properties Fund and the Home Preservation Loan Fund. With these two new funds, Columbus Landmarks is putting its capital and experience to work. Historic preservation is key to a sustainable and equitable future. These two new funds will make pre more preservation happen. So the Endangered Properties Fund, it connects preservation-minded buyers to historic properties that have faced too many obstacles or too few incentives or maybe a gap in resources. Our goal is to collect these buildings, to protect these buildings with preservation easements, and to connect these buildings to their future owners. We're actively pursuing sites, including several sites that are featured on our past most endangered sites list. The Home Preservation Loan Fund provides low interest loans for exterior renovations along with expert guidance from our home preservation program. We are committed to working in neighborhoods that have experienced disinvestment and areas that have yet to benefit from the economic advantages of historic preservation. Earlier this year, Columbus Landmarks was awarded a $100,000 matching grant from the 1772 Foundation of Providence, Rhode Island to double the capital pool of this loan fund. So historic preservation is an investment in our city's vibrant future. Please help create a legacy by helping us with your continued support of Columbus Landmarks. Renew your membership, make a donation, donate a building or a preservation easement. Learn more about these funds at columbuslandmarks.org. It's been an honor to serve as the Columbus Landmarks Board President for the past year, and now it's time for me to pass the torch to the new president in June. Today, I'm excited to announce our new board president, Ann hancock Radisek. Congratulations, Ann. I know I'm leaving the board in good hands. Thanks, Matt. I can honestly say I've never felt so close to you. On behalf of the board, thank you, Matt. Your leadership has been invaluable to us. I am deeply honored the board felt me worthy of such an important responsibility during a momentous time in the organization's history with the creation of the Endangered Properties Fund and the Home Preservation Loan Fund. I look forward to serving as board president during the upcoming year and collaborating with our incredibly talented staff and board. Together, we will lead Columbus Landmarks to continued success. To all of our members at home, thank you for your support. We are so excited to invite you to join us for the return of Buildings Reborn happening this summer live and in person. Our signature event celebrates great examples of successful adaptive reuse and it is a great party. No details to share tonight, but look for a very big announcement coming soon. In the meantime, submit your nominations for the 2021 James B. Retchie Design Awards by visiting columbuslandmarks.org. We'll honor excellence in urban design and toast the winner on October 6th. See you there. Now, Patty Ruth will share the winners of her scavenger hunt. Patty, take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Patty Ruth. I'd like to start out by thanking everyone who participated in our Endangered Sites Scavenger Hunt Contest. I hope you had fun and learned a little along the way. Now, without further ado, here are the weekly winners. Contest winner for week one is Philip Edelsberg. Contest winner for week two is Lee Brooks. Contest winner for week three is Eric Flipsow. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the winner of the Endangered Sites Scavenger Hunt Grand Prize is Laura Plakta. Congrats to all of our winners. And again, thanks to everyone who played our game. And now, Becky West. In closing, I'd like to thank our board and staff for all that you do. And together, we ask for your continued help in creating an architectural legacy that will last for generations. Thanks so much for joining us.